welcome to a very busy Chesington at Halloween. Now we have been for Halloween as you know but it's very very difficult to get kind of night. However the clocks have now gone back. Whilst I enjoy this show very much I'm going to come back when it's night time and we are going to get some darkness tonight. Just to show how bad queues are today which is expected on a Halloween day. People are running to Tiger Rock because it's just reopened. I'm going to take a little saunter down. Since last time I was here, we didn't actually do a full loop. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, I might be able to get a full loop on it. Certainly more luck than judgment. So I've come around here and I was pretty much first in line for Tiger Rock. And yes, I've actually done a lap of it. Even coming back out, apart from the fact it's gone from zero to 30 minute queue, seemingly it's not actually open for the evenings. So because it's got a 30 minute queue and it's half past four, um, yes, close, close to five o'clock darkness. I remember seeing it advertised anywhere. But uh, as you can see, it's all been padlocked up. So those lucky people will be the last ones to get on Tiger Rock today. Quite good, they reopened it in fairness. It was, a, it was a good ride. I've got no complaints, got a bit of a wet bum, but you know. We didn't show it last time, but here is the Enchanted Hollow trick or treat little village. Obviously I'm not going in there. Um, and my children are too old to go in there. Really miss creepy caves, can't lie to you, but no, no, I just really miss creepy caves. Now, Tiger Rock might not be open tonight, but don't worry, we can see the cappies. One of them's come back in home as it is getting dark here. And we are looking forward to taking you around the park in the dark because it's not something we do that often, actually. I can't remember the last time we've done it, to be honest with you. Some of the lighting they've got is fantastic. Not long, we're nearly there. I do remember Ramesses with its lasers sitting there not that long ago now. But our first stop for night is going to be the pumpkin patch. Now, I have to say, I've not walked around here in night before. I have heard it's got some really good lighting. It's quite busy, as you can see. A lot of people are looking for photo opportunities. Oh, far more popular in here than what it is when I come in with the boys the other day. Definitely looks a lot better at night in here, no doubt about that. But there's a lot of people that queue for the photo opportunities. Best in show. And yeah, I've got some lovely lighting. It's always the little things. I'd like these to be lit a little bit better because it's quite funny the way you look at them. It's a bit of a shame they're not, but actually in here, very atmospheric. Also, we just queued for absolutely ages. There's no one on this bit whatsoever. The subtle lighting, I really do love the subtle lighting. River Offs is another one that isn't open in the evening. I just love the look of it. I really do. As we uh, get dark here, we are heading over to Banyan. I can't wait to see that in the dark for the final year. At another area we never see at night is the little walkway of food. Again, it's the simple touches. Looks really, really cool as you walk through it. Whether this be the last time or whether our Wild Asia is open next year is open for debate. However, I think it will be the last time we see it at night. Either way, this time next year, Wild Asia won't be open. And I think this will be the last time. Such soul lighting in here. Really, really like it. We're heading down to Banyan. It's getting a bit of a queue. We're not going to queue for the front this time. We're just going to show you some highlights of it. Kind of, you know, see it from a distance. It'll be sad to see Wild Asia go, I have to say. I still think it's one of the better looking areas. Yeah. 
but not without hardship and troubles. For some had a terrible goal to burn Banyan to the ground, destroying the magic and ripping out his soul. Therefore, the Circle of Eight was enlisted to protect their mighty leader. They rose up to protect Banyan when he was threatened by a new tribe, the Pentites, who challenged the Circle of Eight for the right to protect Banyan. After a tremendous battle, it was decided that the two tribes were stronger together. What started as two rivals would then lead to the almightiest tribe to have ever emerged. No longer enemies, they would always be known as the Warriors of Banyan. Many years passed as the warriors harmoniously protected Banyan with their frozen flames of power. But through the wings, they have felt a tremor in their strength and feel a potential threat on the horizon. A new warrior is coming to destroy everything they have fought so hard to protect. Woods. Obviously, formerly Transylvania's always look great at night, and it's no different during Halloween. It's when it really, really comes to light. If you've liked the video, please, please, please drop it a like. Just it's free to do. It helps us out massively. And if you want to comment on what you think about Chesington this year, if you've come to the Halloween, what you think about the Halloween. But we're now going to have a little walk through Wild Woods, and I haven't done this in the dark for years. I still think Vampire is the best night ride, if you can even see it.
Having a look. On a bicycle. Quickie now. Quickie. Quickie. <laughs> Old villagers. I have to say, I think the tunnel at the end was a little bit brighter than I was hoping it would be, but still brilliant in there. And of course, the actor interaction here at Chesington is excellent. So you saw before that the last Banyan show, the final flame. Um, you know, so it's such a shame we're going to be losing that. But this is kind of where I'd like to see it migrate to. I appreciate this is an IP, and I don't quite know what they would do it over. But you've got this wonderful space in the middle down here which just feels a smidgen wasted if I'm being honest with you I would love to see this area down here used for a show with all the surroundings here and of course the jewel in the top of the Jaguar Mandrill Mayhem comes flying round. It's really busy here on Park. You're 90 minutes of Fury, 90 minutes for Vampire, and you've got 70 minutes at the moment for Mandrill Mayhem. And also, you usually can't see this. Usually, the sun glares on it, but at night, look at that. That works really well at night. But there's Welder Jumanji. Not a lot of light going on here. Not a lot of light going on over here. And of course the focal point with the jewel, which lights up as the train goes around the top piece. Mandrill goes around the top, ready for it to light up and come back. That's so cool, that little effect. Sometimes it's the simple things that work. As it comes zooming past here again. Bearing in mind I've walked straight from there to here, shows you how quickly they're actually loading it today. Well, that's it. That's Chesterton done for another year, and that is our last visit of the season. I really hope you've enjoyed it. There's a lot of work to do, but you know we love it.